I decided to make a video on building a new pipe stand for my blacksmithing shop. This one here is an okay vice. It's a Harbor Freight and it's been okay. I do like the uh, rotating feature, but this strips out very easily. Stripped out, but I can, that's easily fixed. I can fix that easy enough. And you can see that I used a rim off of a, I can't remember if that's off, it's a bent rim off of a Suburban or something, uh, Denali something. I Anyway, it was useless, so it made a good stand. And then I just welded this plate and then a tube and then a plate there. It's been good, it's been okay. But uh, a good vice is in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And this is a good old, very old vice. Very heavy, it is very heavy. It's probably 50 plus pounds. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna make this video as short as I can. When I, the way I'm gonna make a pipe stand is I got this plate and I've drilled holes in it, which I'm also gonna look real close at trying to find another one of these and make a swedge block. It occurred to me that this would make a great swedge block. Anyway, uh, drill the holes for that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna mount it on this instead of uh, automobile rim. This is a tractor trailer and these are monsters. I don't even know what that would weigh. It's got to weigh over a hundred pounds easy. Anyway, uh, I had, I did have this plate here made so that that will fit the inside diameter of this. So I'm going to clean this up and we'll put a pipe in between it. Anyway, I'll just try to make it brief and show a few steps of how I'm making this pipe stand and it, it should be virtually immovable. It's one of the best heavy duty setups for a blacksmith shop you could ever come up with. And by the way, I wanted to mention that one of the essential tools for blacksmithing to get mill scale off is a butcher block brush. And there's nothing like this for if you got you know a really rough plate like that's what this is and you gotta get some heavy duty grit off of it you gotta have a butcher block brush and these are mainly exactly what they say they are they're mainly for butchers to clean their the blocks they just brush the meat and fat off their wooden tables but anyway this this can go to town when you need it to and I've got a sander I'll use to clean it up this is not absolutely perfectly clean but it's down to the original mill scale and there's two reasons it's got to be clean whenever you're doing something like this is it's uh, you got to be able to see your soapstone mark so it's got to be clean enough to hold a, a mark and also this has got to be clean enough for the uh, your ground clamp on your welding machine to be able to make a really good uh, current or a really good circuit when you go to do your welding the one thing I do, do not like about this Harbor Freight vise, it's okay in just about every way except these jaws are extremely <clears throat> rough and they will mar, they will easily mar whatever it's holding. That's the only thing I really don't like. And this particular vise, you can't see it too well, but the, the, the jaws are not nearly as rough. And uh, I could mill these down, and I may do that, <coughs> but, a, but a, <coughs> a little bit smoother job that's not going to screw your work up, your projects. Um, but anyway, this has got to be not perfectly clean, but fairly clean so for your soapstone and your, uh, so that your ground clamp on your welding machine can get a good, you can strike a good arc lay these holes out the very best that you can because uh, it's going to be important to uh, line line up these holes. These holes are actually like seven eighths. They're huge. I just held the plate in there and then just pushed against it and, let, and 
marked them as best I could and then center punched them. I will do all ten, but I'm gonna, only going to start with five, and I'm going to do five eighths instead of seven eighths. Mainly because you could do the seven eighths, and that'd be great. But because I just, you know, it comes down to your calibrated eyeball, and uh, it's hard to get things like this absolutely perfect. So that gives me, by using five eighths, for one thing, the bolts are cheaper, and I'll use all ten. It'll be plenty strong, but uh, it gives me some room for this to, you know, move move around in those big holes. Gives me some room for error. Or I could go larger, but hardware is unbelievably expensive these days. Um, and actually, this is all scrap. The only thing I did buy was the um, was the um, bolts. So anyway, lay them out as best you can. Center punch them as close as you know you can estimate it to be. And then I'm fixing to drill them out now. Okay, once you have the pieces cut, which I decided I want a height of about 42 inches, so just add up with this plus this plus that is going to equal, and then that gives you subtract that from 42 inches, and then this is that's the length you need for your pipe. This going to stand to find the center of. A square, of course, is pretty obvious. You just lay a straight edge across and then mark your center. And then you make a, uh, I just use a center punch and then a compass or divider. And on uh, this one, I'll show you how I find the center of a circle. There's several ways to do it, and <clears throat> this is how I do it. I use this tool right here. It's specially made for... Uh, it's a center finder, is what it is. Uh, they're pretty cool. And all you do is, you know, you just, it'll work on any size circle. But you uh, simply make a mark this way, and then one that way. And I actually do three, but uh, three or four. But where they, all of them intersect is the dead center. Then you just make a center punch and uh, use your compass or divider and soapstone and <clears throat> whatever size pipe you use. I, I thought about using 4 inch, but I think 2 inch will be plenty. Uh, there are other ways of finding the center of a circle, and in, it would take uh, some time for me to explain how that is, but if you just go online and just type in how to find the center of a circle, it'll show you several methods, if, if, that is if you, don't, if you don't have one of these. And I didn't for years, but uh, you can use two 45 uh, degree, um, well, the term slips me, but anyway, the, uh, you got the 30, 60, 90, and then you got the uh, 45 degree uh, drafting tools. And using the right angles off the 45s, you can find the center. But anyway, Rather than go through all that and take up a bunch of time, just go online and type in how to find the center of a circle, and there's several methods of doing that. Anyway, now it's just a matter of welding these together, and I've already drilled the holes to support the vise, and so, and uh, LP wants to hog the video, so, see, he's afraid he won't get some attention. Anyway, that's it for, for the moment, and I'll get them welded together, and then we'll have a look at it. After the welding's done, then it's just a matter of bolting it together. A heavier-duty blacksmith and vice there never was, and I always have to have a really good feeling about saving things from the scrap pile. The only thing this cost me was the bolts and washers. And it's about 42 inches high, which is just the right size for blacksmithing. And I believe that would last many lifetimes. And I really like the uh, square cut holes in this plate. 
for putting tools in. Anyway, I have to say that well, it was not a hard job. It was pretty, pretty quick and easy. And uh, hope, uh, hope this helps somebody out.